scholars, scholars, scholars. Hey, most of you, many of you, maybe a bunch of you, are not very good at maps, all right? Now, when I tell you, we're going to have to go know the California coast. We have to know the topography to make sense of what we're talking about with all these expeditions and stuff like that. So you have to know the relationship of Monterey, San Diego, Santa Barbara, Los Angeles especially, okay? And then later on, we'll develop more, okay? So first and foremost, on the map, that right there is Point Conception. It's a big cut. Notice that the coast here, that's Santa Barbara right there. When you're in Santa Barbara watching a sunset, you do not look out over the ocean. Sunsets to your right, it's over the over Point Conception out here. So, so you see, we look, we look out to a sunset. They, they don't, you know, they, 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 they you know, rarely see them over the, over the ocean, okay? So, so what you have is, a, is you, you have a California bite. And it really, you see, this goes down this way and this bites in. So you really need a strong, always a strong point conception, a coming down and a cutting in. And notice that San Diego is, San Diego is actually east of Reno, Nevada, okay? So you gotta get this cutting down. That's Monterey Bay there, point conception there. This bulge here is where Palos Verdes is and then we're in San Diego there. Notice that the four islands are below Point Conception. Point Conception, and many of you had them sitting out here and stuff. Now, these are very important because these are full of Indians and we're gonna talk about them and stuff like that. That's Santa Catalina right there. So get your coastline, Do you know your coastline. Be in California, there we are. Now we started out last time talking about Cabrillo. And Cabrillo, we pointed out, was part of this conquistador horrible stuff that happens in Mexico City. But, you know, uh, by the time, 20 years later, when you get to 1640, Spain is trying to fix this sort of stuff. And it's trying to regularize this stuff and especially put Christian order in it. Nobody uh, at the highest levels wants to, uh, you know, impose slavery on the Indians or kill Indians or do anything like that. They're actually trying to bring them in, incorporate them, and in the imperial term for this is, is friendship. And it's, they, they take that seriously. They want good relations, build friendships. And so Cabrillo even has orders, you know, go up and make friends with the coast of California. Now, uh, let's get up here. This is a situation we're going to have to talk about some more. And and gosh, this is where we really could be together because most of us, uh, because, you know, we've been since the 1970s, there's been this really sort of a emphasis on what gets called here uh, critical mission studies. Critical mission studies comes at the missions and, and the colonization of California from these big ideas, okay? That's not what we're going to do. <laughs> Uh, big ideas of critical, especially in imperialism and, you know, and all that sort of stuff. And uh, we are actually going to stick to the documents of, the, you know, the primary sources. And the primary sources give us a picture of very high intentions. Uh, Cabrillo is not told to sort of, you know, be part of some program to destroy Indian life and, you know, something. It, it is actually something which is... Um, now, things are going to screw up. You know, lots of things screw up in this. In, you know, this is the world of sin we live in. You know, everything screws up. But the thing is, is it, that people are coming with high aspirations, being ordered by government officials to have high aspirations, much like American history. American history, you can teach American history as one bad thing after another, or you can teach American history as in the light of its aspirations, and its aspirations are real in the hearts and minds of people at the time and in, uh, in the activities, and the aspirations of, of the United States are largely written in the Declaration of Independence. And, you know, life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness sort of flourishing for everybody, all right? We know Thomas Jefferson just was a screw up in his brain when he wrote that, but at the same time, that becomes this aspirational thing. So we are going to stick to the documents and look for the way those aspirations sort of work on the ground. Okay, so we're not going to do this sort of 
critical mission studies in which you really, it's, an, it's a type of what we, what we used to teach is a, like the black legend, that the Protestants of, uh, of America yeah, had really sort of always presented the Spanish as evil, Spanish Catholics as something doing something bad, whereas the Protestants were doing something good, and so there's this black legend. Well, this is sort of a new black legend, I think, what they're doing. So we don't want to do critical mission studies. We want to do, let's, let's deal with the documents, let's talk, let's, let's empathize with the aspirations, and let's, you know, let's see how things work out, because a lot of disease, a lot of stuff we have to talk about happens with the colonization. But on the other hand, is it's, you know, we are not talking about uh, conquistadors. Cabrillo did not come as a conquistador. He had been a conquistador, but Cabrillo, and then the later people we're, later people we're going to talk about do not come to conquer and steal and oppress. They come to basically hope to spread Spanish ideals, Spanish, what we call the Pax Hispanica, this, this sort of flourishing Spanish Christian civilization. All right, uh, that's a good subject for discussion. Now, the other thing that uh, we always need to keep in mind <laughs> is that we are on the far side of the world in a very isolated place because of the currents and stuff. You know, we're actually more isolated than the Philippines, if you think about it, because we have these currents and winds that push down. It's easier to get from Mexico to the Philippines than it is to get from Mexico to San Francisco. Imagine that. Easier to get from Phil Mexico to the Philippines than it is to get from Mexico to, um, to San Francisco. So, so that's this isolation, that, this sort of geographical isolation we have. So, so the thing is, is that... Uh, um, uh, in this isolation, the kings of Spain, you know, they don't think much about California. <laughs> you know, we're off the radar. Hundreds of years can go by and a king of Spain won't even think about us. But uh, when they do, uh, and it often happens because of uh, the Pacific, you know, there's galleon trades and all sorts of stuff. It, uh, there's, they, will, they will have a person in Mexico. The person in Mexico is in charge of us. We are we are Mexicans, okay? One of the things we have to work through this class a lot. You and I, if we're sort of Californians, we are fundamentally, historically, culturally Mexican, okay? And so this Mexican notion of us uh, needs to be embedded in us. Now, so Mexico, Spain rules Mexico. Mexico has these viceroys. Now, we talked about Mendoza. Mendoza was the one that the guy Charles V sent over. Okay, this is in Balboa Park. Charles V sends Mendoza, who's not here, who sends Cabrillo. Charles V and Cabrillo. But between them is this guy, Mendoza. This is Philip III. He's going to send a guy to Mexico named the Count of Monterey. We're going to call him the Count of Monterey. It's the easiest to call him that. And he's the one who sends Vizcano. So this is the sort of line we're talking about here uh, in class today. All right, so this Count of Monterey is like Mendoza in that he's highly educated Christian uh, guy who believes in the humanist values of education and, and all sorts of things, does not want to oppress Indians. But at this time, at the beginning of the 17th century, around 1600, his job is to is to get some settlements going. And uh, the most important settlement he starts is Santa Fe here. Where, yeah, Santa Fe. And Santa Fe, notice the dates of that. That's the same time as Jamestown in Virginia. That's the same time as, as uh, uh, Quebec in, in, uh, in Canada. And it's uh, just a little, little before the uh, pilgrims come to, uh, to uh, uh, Massachusetts, OK? So we're part of this Spanish-French English colonization of what is now the United States, and this is Santa Fe that's, that's doing it. Now notice that there's two Monterey's. This Monterey is the one in Mexico, and it was a staging ground for the expedition up the Rio Grande to, to settle and colonize what is now New Mexico, and that Rio Grande area where there were lots of, lots of Indians. Um, and then also another idea is to settle 
the coast of California, or at least begin the settlement of what is also called Monterey, Monterey with one R, which is the, uh, which would be a coastal town that would help with the, let me, let's go back there. Uh, see, here's the coast of California. There's the California Bight, Point Conception, and that's Monterey there. And when the uh, people are coming back, when the Manila Galleons are coming back from the Philippines, they're coming down this coast. And it was thought they could use that as a staging ground, maybe stop off there, you know, do some, some help. It never worked out. But the idea of Monterey is at the same time as the founding of Jamestown. Sort of interesting, right? Jamestown's actually founded in 1607. The idea of Monterey and the actual naming of Monterey on the map is 1602. So east and west coast, you know, we often think that California is so much later, but you know, it's, it's, it's in the same ballpark, all right? Now, so uh, what happens is that missionaries are, are along this trip with the Count of Monterey. You know, the Count of Monterey sends this guy Viscano, and on the boat with Viscano is a guy named Ascension. This guy here is Ascension. See, Ascension is on the same boat as Viscano under the rule of Philip III in Spain, and who's not shown here is the Count of Monterey, who's the guy in Mexico who sent them and facilitated. And Ascension writes a plan for settlement. And in that plan, it's that Nobody, and this is the same true, pretty much the same is true of Santa Fe in, in New Mexico, is Spain is going to do this because it is supposed to do this because God wants it done. Spain is not planning to make money off of California. Uh, Spain is not planning to make money off of New Mexico. I mean, there's nothing there. So uh, the, what is Spain is wanting to do is, is to go missionize among the many, many Indians that are in both New Mexico and, and the California coast. And the job then, uh, Ascension says, is to find good captains of positive, you know, not kill, crush, main conquistadors, but, but good captains who have the high vision of, of Spanish responsibility and also soldiers that would go with them. Now to do that, you're going to have to pay them more. Okay, so the soldiers that are going to be sent on these expeditions are going to be better paid because we're going to get better soldiers. They're actually going to have a cross that's sort of written on them and symbolize that they are good guys. They're not conquistadors. They're not coming with a bad idea of kill, crush, and maim, and destroy. And one of the other things that uh, um, Ascension writes about is that the partnership between the church and the state would be very tight. And in fact, that the primary reason for going up there would be religious. And so therefore, the, the missionaries would be essentially the most, well, they're not in charge. There'd be this tight relationship, but that the captains need to defer to the missionaries. Okay, And we're going to see that this actually does happen when you get to Father Sarah and to uh, Gaspar Portola, you know, who, who come and they do the in, initial colonization of California 150 years later. But uh, at this point, you have a plan for the colonization of California. You have a guy coming up the coast who's naming Monterey, especially on the map right there. This is going to be where we focus our, our goals. And that, that will happen again in 150 years. Okay, we want to do one more thing is, is set this up, and that's that you have uh, missionary orders, and we're going to discuss this a num uh, more as we go along, but the Franciscans are the followers of St. Francis of Assisi, and they have a sort of special way of thinking, and they come to settle um, the coast of California, and so our missions in Alta California, San Diego to San Francisco, are Franciscan missions, and Father Sarah is a Franciscan. But 
the ideas behind those missions and how they work and actually the sort of like even the funding of these missions that eventually settled California are from the Jesuits, okay? And the Jesuits are, uh, you know, this is Loyola Marymount University in LA. Loyola was this guy named Ignatius Loyola and he's the founder of what we call the Jesuits. They were called the Society of Jesus. And they were this very vigorous missionary bunch. The Franciscans are actually older by three or 400 years, but then the Jesuits come along and are very vigorous. Jesuits come to places all over the world. And, and so any place that, uh, any schools, you know, that are named Xavier with an X or uh, Loyola, you know, these, these are Jesuit schools, okay? And the Jesuits had come already to um, what is Paraguay. You know, here. Now, this is that movie, The Mission, and I gave you a trailer, you know, so that you can watch. It's a great movie, you know, Robert De Niro and stuff like that. But the thing is, uh, the Jesuits had created what they called, you know, these republics. And the idea of these republics was to reduce, and by reduce, they meant to pull together into towns and villages. You know, basically, you have all these people in small villages. Let's build a big one. And let's create a mission station, which is not where, you know, the your land gets taken away from the Indians, but all the Indians work together. It's sort of like a commune, you know, it's a, and it's going to have as its leader the sort of patriarchs, the sort of intellectual fathers of this is these uh, two Franciscan uh, missionaries, okay? And the, uh, uh, so you get a number of these republics uh, in Paraguay. And they're very successful for a while, but as in the movie, the, the Jesuits are repressed because they become very powerful. One of the things about the Jesuits is the Jesuits work directly for the Pope. They actually have a structure which makes them like, I don't know, Navy SEALs or something. They like, you know, Rangers. They're like, you know, go in there and, and do their own thing, you know, uh, sort of very efficient missionary system. But on the other hand, it's not controlled by local bishops, not controlled by local archbishops, and especially not directly controlled by the kings of countries. And so kings of countries don't like the Jesuits, and government officials tend to not like the Jesuits. And so what happens is the Jesuits get repressed, and that's how California gets established by uh, Franciscans, is Jesuits get repressed. Let me tell you about the big what goes on in Baja, California now. This is, here again, we're giving you the, the, the stages, uh, and, uh, it, and I'm never gonna test you on all of the intricacies of, of how this works, but you need to understand that we don't just create these missions in California um, out of nowhere. They're, they come from a deep history of, of ideals, and they come from a deep um, systems within the church of how to, how to best do missionary strategy and things like that. And so the Jesuits had uh, a guy named, um, the, guy, the, the key person here is this guy, Kino. And if, you've, if you grew up in, in Arizona or New Mexico, you read more about Kino than Father Sarah. Kino is this very interesting guy. And Kino, much older than Sarah, is uh, a Jesuit. And he travels all over Sonora and Arizona and New Mexico and stuff and does this amazing stuff, founds a lot of, of what become churches and things like that. But also, he becomes interested in Baja, California. And he says that we need to, we need to uh, missionize Baja, California. And so these dots here, these are later become missions in Baja, California. And those are Jesuit missions initially. Later on, Dominicans take them over, another missionary organization when the Jesuits are depressed, repressed. But the, uh, but the Jesuits had really established a mission system modeled on what was in Paraguay, which was very successful, of bringing Indians into friendship relations 
in which they ran like these big ranchos, these big sort of communes as a sort of communal thing in which the Jesuits were missionizing. And, and they had the potential of doing really good work. And uh, when Father Kino first tried to missionize this coast, He failed. Uh, there's this, there's this, he and a, it was a similar situation to what we're going to experience later with Father Sarah and Porto Law, is the church and the state work together. A military officer is sent with the missionaries, and they go out here, and they, they eventually try and set up a mission there that fails. And so the Spanish ultimately have to leave. In the meantime, you know, that's a little trip that, uh, Kino did to see the Pacific Ocean. But so in this failure, they come back and the Mexican viceroy doesn't want to support another mission to Baja. It just seems like it's not going to work. It's very desert. It's hard to make it work. The Indians, some of the Indians are very antagonistic to this and stuff like that. So uh, Jesuits, being Jesuits, they are not going to take no for an answer. And so they then come up with something very important to us, which is called the Pious Fund for the Californios. Okay? The Pious Fund for the Californios. And this is actually where uh, they sent letters to their parents. I mean, uh, Kino and a lot of the folks uh, come from fairly wealthy European families. And they start to ask their moms and dads and grandmas and, and other people from Europe to contribute to a special missionary fund for California. And so they're to, you know, like any sort of appeal within the church is, you know, pray for wisdom and pray for California. And while you're praying for California, also give money for supporting missionary activities. And so a large amount of money is given over to a mission fund specifically for California. Spanish are very legal people, so you can't, you gotta use this for California. And so what happens is, is you do get a fund that is for missionizing California. And that fund, I give you a little history here, it, it, it existed until like 1963, until it was finally done, done away with. But it was this, throughout California's history that we'll be talking about, there's always this Spanish fund dedicated, or not Spanish fund, it's a, it's a Catholic fund, a European Catholic fund designated for money to support missionary activity in the Californias. And it will be very important. So this sets us up for Father Sarah and for Portola and the coming into Cal what we're calling California, Alta California is that the Jesuits had set all the patterns. The Jesuits had created this big fund to support the, the work. Here again, Spain is not expecting to make money at it. Uh, there, it's going to cost Spain money to do this. They're going to have to pay people well and do this. You know, and then, as we're going to see, the boats need to be built. A port needs to build, be built to support the California missions and all that sort of stuff. And where is this money going to come from? It's going to come from the state. But it's also, a lot of it's going to come from this fund. This fund is going to subsidize the activity. And that's an amazing thing. Step back and just, California, we are, this whole story of, of, uh, of California's, the missions being founded in Monterey and San Francisco and San Diego and eventually Los Angeles and all this sort of stuff, have at their roots this deeply Christian missionary vision which is both the state participates in, because the state's not the enemy in this. Uh, the state's actually trying to keep you know, that conquistador mentality out and keep the goodness of the missionary idea in. The state is not trying to make money. There's no gold rush. There's no greed that's pushing, pushing for colonization. And then on the other hand, what is pushing for colonization is actually from Europe, uh, a, a fund, people giving money and saying their prayers for California. California is an answer to prayer. <laughs> That's a weird idea, but it, you know, in, in this deep way, 
Uh, yes, it's an answer to prayer. So this is why this critical mission studies, you know, where you, where you come at it from these sort of large secular ideas of, of uh, you know, imperialism, there's truth there, there's good, you know, I'm not saying there's all wrong, there's bad stuff going on, but on the other hand is, is uh, one of the things that we can do as a Christian college is emphasize uh, what we know to be true, which is we, you know, we know from our churches and stuff, is, these, is there's lots of good-hearted people giving money, working with government, stuff like that, working with institutions, for good, who who really are trying to do good. Now, bad things can happen. Things can, can can screw up. But California is going to be this aspiration that uh, is going to flourish, and we want to talk more about that. And that's going to come with Father Sarah, who you know we are founded by Father Sarah, who is a saint. It's an amazing thing. Okay.